Building wealth. Everybody wants to build wealth in one way or another. The thing is, we're always usually talking about how you build wealth. And the thing I've found personally from just observing, whether it's watching videos on YouTube or listening to various people, is that there's too much focus on how you build wealth. There's so much to building wealth that we just don't talk about, such as the impact on family, the impact on our communities, uh, cultural implications and cultural impacts. There's just so much more to this activity of building wealth. And by the way, building wealth is a good thing and should be enjoyed as a process. So today I just want to share very candidly, this is a very casual video, I'm just chilling at home today and I just want to just talk about five unusual things that I've learned from my parents about building wealth. These are things that I'd love for you to actually co-create with me as, as I make this video. I'd love for you to think to yourself, what have you learned from your parents, whether it's by watching your parents or whether it's by listening to your parents, what is it that you've learned from them about building wealth? And as you watch this video, please drop them in the comments because it'd be very interesting to see what we've all learned from our parents. These five things I'm sharing, I consider them to be unusual things uh, because they're just things that people don't ordinarily talk about. So I hope you'll enjoy them and I hope they will enrich you and enrich your life in a totally different way. As you watch this video, if you enjoy it, I'd love for you to subscribe. If you've been watching us for some time or if you're new to our channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button because it just really helps our channel to grow and helps us get in front of so many more people. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it as well. My name's Ken of the Humble Penny and Financial Joy Academy. What we do on this channel is to give you guys the tips, the insights, the practical hacks to help you work towards a dream life of financial independence and money joy. I've enjoyed my personal process of building wealth with my wife, Mary, who has gone off to pick the kids up uh, from school at this very moment. And it's been a really interesting journey. And the word journey is actually very important when you think about building wealth. But today I just wanna share this perspective with you. I'm gonna dive in now and share these five unusual tips that I've learned from my parents about building wealth. Number one is that to build wealth, you have to keep knocking on doors. Okay, there's a story behind this one. I went for a drive with my mum uh, not too long ago. We just went for a drive and we're just talking about life and talking about you know her journey. And if you don't know, my mum's also a first generation immigrant, you know, moved to the UK with me. And I was a, a young 14 year old and she was in her mid forties. And we're just talking about her journey, her career journey, her, in effect, her wealth building journey. She said something really stuck with me and I'll probably never forget. She said that in order for her to get the job that she had before we moved over to the UK, which is the job she had was a really, uh, you know, high level role, uh, high ranking officer in, in, the, in the department she worked in. In order to get that job, she had to travel from one state to another, this is in Nigeria, she had to travel 11 times, 11 times. Each time she'd fly, fly down there to the capital, to Abuja, to go and see whether, you know, the way things work back then and probably still do now, you go and see whether your name's shown up on the list of people who've got the job. And if you haven't got the job, you have to go back and maybe either give up or keep trying. And she had to do it 11 times. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, would I really persist? And key point there's about persisting, about continually knocking on doors. Would I really persist 11 times to get that one thing? And for her, that job was the beginning of her wealth building journey. And she's built wealth together with my dad in different ways across different asset classes over, over the years. But that beginning point for her really demonstrated an attitude of persistence. And it's something I've seen in my personal life in different ways, whether it's me persisting when I'm creating a side hustle or whether it's me persisting when I'm trying to ask for promotions. So today I just wanna put this point out there to you. On your wealth building journey, 
Are you continually knocking on doors? You know, what area of your wealth building journey do you need to knock on more doors about? Could it be that you're trying to make a buy to let investment, but you know that it will require some work for you to go out there and do some research, to build a deposit and things like that. And perhaps you're not doing that bit of work that might open up that door towards you building a different type of asset in your financial net worth? Or could it be that you're trying to seek promotions or that you're trying to perhaps move on from where you are at the moment in your current job? I would love for you to just ponder upon that. You know, what aspect of your life do you need to knock on more doors about? Because my learning from my mom in particular, in this example, is that persisting on your wealth building journey ultimately helps you to deliver a positive outcome. The second unusual thing is to build wealth by taking your siblings along. Okay, this very point is particularly close to my heart and one that I've seen really uh, destroy families uh, if one person has gone off and done very well and perhaps does not share or take others along. You know, one thing that my parents have done very well is to continually go on about these very points, continually. And it's really helped me and my siblings really on our wealth building journey to make sure that we're bringing each other along because it's nothing worse than you doing well and then your other siblings not doing well. And then therefore you end up essentially um, living totally different lives because you can't relate to each other. I've noticed that one thing that has happened very naturally as a result of my parents with my siblings is the need for us to share ideas continually. Like for example, you know, if I've done something and I've done many things that have done really well, what I've found happens organically is that I'm able to call my sisters or call my brother and say, hey, what's going on? Or by the way, look, this is this stuff's working out. Have you considered exploring this form of uh, investment? Have you considered exploring this type of business? Have you considered looking at your lifestyle in this particular way? And the same thing on their side as well. So thinking about taking your siblings along on your wealth building journey is possibly the best thing you could ever do. Because think about it, outside of your parents, who, you know, if you're close to your parents, they're probably the closest people to you outside of your partner, maybe. So outside of your partner and outside of your parents, the people who are closest to you really are your siblings. I almost think of them as my, my zone of protection almost. You've got my wife, my children, I've got my parents, I've got my siblings, and all these people, provided you're taking, taking them along on that wealth building journey, you will enjoy the process of building wealth because you all celebrate together as you all progress together on your wealth building journey. The third unusual thing is that building wealth is not just about accumulating money, okay? Now, this might surprise a lot of people and I really hope it doesn't. This year in particular has really shown me this very point more than ever before. There are things that are far more important than money. Health, for example. Oh my goodness, this year more than ever. I mean, you know, with what's been going on, around the country, around the whole world, um, this year has really shown me that, you know, you can have all the money you want, you can have all the money, but if you've got no health, you've got no life, you know? And I've seen this, you know, even with very, very close family members, this close, this close to literally not being with us anymore. And, you know, you can have all the money in the bank, but like, you know, it, it can't buy you health. So I'm just mentioning this point just so that you can really consider where you are in your life right now. Are you sacrificing your health for money? Because if you're doing that, then I really wanna urge you, I want it to sow this seed in your mind that it's the wrong bet to make. It's definitely the wrong thing to be doing. Um, I've literally this year have, you know, health, although it's always been very important, now ranks far, far higher in my personal analysis of wealth than the actual money itself. Though, of course, the financial bit's very important and it, it works very well with your health, of course. But, you know, I'd much rather have amazing health and have very little money, you know? But, you know, if you can, obviously have, you know, a good balance of both. But where possible, definitely make sure that you're not sacrificing all you are and you know, your energy and who you are just to acquire money because in the end, it might not be the best decision. 
Number four is that to build real financial wealth, you cannot do it alone. Wow, this very point, there's so much to talk about when it comes to this. I can tell you right now, that there's absolutely no way that we would be where we are financially today, being mortgage free, being financially independent, you know, being in a good place financially, there'd be no way we'd be where we are today without me having my wife as an incredible life partner. Absolutely no way. We needed to have come together and to have this family vision for building wealth. And it has served us really well because I've seen the opposite. I've seen relationships where two people are building wealth parallel to each other. If you can relate to this, or if you've grown up in a household where your parents were living like that, then please let me know in the comments because you know I've seen that even in my own situation uh, where you know, parents could have done a lot better financially had they really worked together, you know? And this has been a good learning, not just for them, but also for us. So I'd love to know from you culturally, have you seen that in your own household? You know, have your parents built wealth separately and how has it turned out for them? Would they have seen a better outcome if they worked closer together? It's been that case for me and my wife. The second point I wanted to make relating to uh, you not being able to just build wealth just by yourself is around business. Because if you think about lots of people who run small businesses, you find that the people who remain very small and don't ultimately grow and turn that business into something that becomes, you know, that really enhances their wealth are those people who don't give up control and want to do everything by themselves. Whereas the people who think in the opposite way and say, well, actually, I have to eject myself from the business and get other people involved, therefore giving up control and injecting in trust. Again, notice the key ingredients there, control and trust, they work in opposite. Having those things in place help those people build their businesses and therefore build real wealth and therefore en enhance their financial position. The same ingredients, by the way, that you might see in a relationship, the need for control to be given up and for the need for trust to be injected. So I want to just ponder upon this point today. How is it that you are trying to build financial wealth in your life right now? Are you trying to do it via working together with your partner? Or are you perhaps trying to do it via building a business, for example? Are you overly in control of things that are going on. Is there a case for you giving up some control and injecting in some trust in order for that unity to be built in order for that wealth journey to really be taken to that next level? I'd love to hear from you in the comments actually. Let me know if that particular point is one that hit home for you. The fifth point is that true riches come when you are able to freely give to others. Oh man, this very point, I tell you right now, is such a big point. Here's, here's an example. And this is one I struggled with, by the way, for a really long time. And I've had to really learn this, particularly from my mom, just observing my mom be incredibly gen generous through her life and seeing that take her to places that you wouldn't even believe. Amazing places in her life in terms of life outcome. The thing is when we think about giving, we know giving, I guess deep down we know giving is a good thing. But the thing is the big struggle most people have when it comes to giving is that people say, ah, I'll wait till I've built some wealth until then I will start to give. When in actual fact, the real gift is that you should learn the process of giving as early as possible with the little you have, such that it becomes embedded in your internal culture, in terms of who you are, and such that giving becomes a part of who you are. Because it becomes very, very difficult. Because if you're able to give, hypothetically, let's say you've got a thousand pounds and you're able to give a hundred pounds from that, and that becomes a normal thing for you to do, it becomes a lot harder if you had a hundred thousand pounds. It'd be a lot harder for you to give 10% of that, as an example. If you to give 10,000 pounds away, it'd be a lot harder because you haven't built this thing into your internal culture, this need for you to give. And I've, I've seen with the examples, 
by observing my parents and by observing my own life, even in the bits that I've been able to do through my life, as far as making giving a part of who I am, I've seen giving really become a game changer in our lives. And it's something that I'm focusing a lot more at. I'm, I'm by no means perfect in this area of giving. In fact, I see it as a, a growth journey. But a big part of building wealth should really be about giving freely. Uh, because your wealth building is expanded. You essentially live a more expansive life the more you're able to make giving part of your wealth building journey and adventure. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this very candid video around the unusual things I've learned from my parents around building wealth. Wealth building should be fun. It should be seen as a hobby. Just as you might enjoy your knitting or your football or your walking or reading, you should make building wealth a part of your hobby. I've heard a quote which said, you should do the best you can in your job full time, but make building wealth your part time occupation. I completely agree with that because it really can transform your life. But whilst you are building wealth, don't forget to have that balance in your life. Don't swap the need for you to make money with the need for you to give up on your health because ultimately you end up not making the most of your life potential by doing that. And as I mentioned earlier, as you are building wealth, make it a deliberate thing to take others along with you, whether it's your siblings or whether it's those around you as you're building wealth because what you find is, is that it becomes a much more fun thing to do if you have other people who you can celebrate your wealth building journey with. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you really enjoyed it, I'd love for you to make sure you subscribe to this channel because it really helps us as we build this channel to get in front of so many more people and help them on their journey as well. If you're new to our channel, I'd really appreciate you also hitting that like button because it just helps our videos get in front of a lot more people. Thank you so much for watching today. And as I started off with this video earlier, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What unusual things have you learned from your parents about building wealth? I'm really excited to actually look in the comments and see what you've got to share. Thank you so much once again. And as ever, in all things, be thankful and seek joy. Take care and bye for now.